Welcome back. In this module, we're going to be taking a look at Suite Scripts, which is the programming language for NetSuite. And don't worry, I'm not assuming you know programming. I'm going to be explaining the basics that an administrator should know to operate with scripts in NetSuite. So first off, what is Suite Scripts? Suite Scripts is a JavaScript-based programming language that's used within NetSuite. And it's used for customizations. You can use it to set up automations as well as integrations with other external systems such as Shopify, Expensify, Salesforce, etc. Now, while scripts have similarities to workflows, you have to understand that workflows do have limitations. So scripts have a lot of additional customizations that workflows simply can't accomplish. So instead of using one or the other, it's best to have both in operation to fit your needs with NetSuite. Similar to workflows, scripts are triggered in their action. So something will occur in the system that triggers the script to occur. It can also be set up on a schedule. So it simply runs on a routine preset time. Now, while a technical consultant or a skilled in-house programmer will be setting up Suite Scripts, for your company's NetSuite instance, you are the one responsible. So it's important for you to know what scripts are, which scripts are running on your NetSuite, as well as know some basic troubleshooting tips. The first thing we're going to be covering is the basic types of scripts. There's a number of different types, but the five main ones that we're going to cover here start with client side scripts. Those scripts are ones that, in this case, when we say client, we're referring to the user. So on one side, you have the user, and on the other side, you have the server, meaning NetSuite. So a client side script is one that is interacting just on the user side. So when the user pulls up a browser, let's say they're looking at a record, what they're seeing, if the script is working on that record, it's simply going to be operating on the browser side for the user. The next type of script is an event-based script, which means that based on some event, let's say the user updates a record and hits submit, so now that change in the record is going back to the NetSuite server. So that event is going to be creating or triggering a change and a script to run on the system side within NetSuite. So that's an event-based script. Thirdly, we have what's called a map slash reduced script. The simplicity of that is that it's often used for mass updates. For example, let's say you had a bunch of sales orders and you wanted to update the memo line on all of them at the same time. You could run a map reduce script and do that deployment all at once. Next, we have suitelets. And suitelets are custom pages made in NetSuite to achieve some sort of capability that natively NetSuite doesn't have, maybe some advanced level of search that you need for your NetSuite instance, you can create that and it'll basically come up. They often look just like a normal NetSuite page and they'll have certain, you know, whatever you want or whatever the functionality is that you're trying to put in will be on that suitelet. And lastly, that we're gonna describe here is called a restlet, rest being in capital letters. And the simplicity of that is that if you have an integration, like let's say I mentioned earlier, Shopify, Expensify, Salesforce, you need a connector between your NetSuite instance and that external system. And that integration is going to be done using a restlet. So those five are some of the most commonly used types of SuiteScript. Next, we have the various versions of SuiteScript. The simplicity is there was a version 1.0, so that's more of the older legacy version of SuiteScript. It tends to be a little bit slower. Then there was 2.0, so that's much faster than 1.0. And the most recent version of SuiteScript is 2.1. There's also a version referred to as 2.x, which is really just a combination of 2.0 and 2.1. The last thing we're going to cover in this video is the location where Suite Scripts live in NetSuite. So understand when you're making a workflow, you're building that in NetSuite. However, when you're making a Suite Script, that's actually going to be created. That programming is going to be done outside of NetSuite, and then it's going to be brought into NetSuite. And the place that that's going to exist is if we take a look here. So we're going to go to Documents, Files, and File Cabinet. So I described the File Cabinet back in the Basics of NetSuite course. But once you're here, you'll notice we have Suite Scripts down here. So if I click on that, 
So if you have a bunch of scripts, and right now I'm in a demo account, but if you have scripts in your NetSuite instance, you're gonna see them lined up here. And at the end of each file, you'll see a .js because it's made using JavaScript. So you'll see all those files laid out. And again, this is just to understand where these things are being stored. You shouldn't be messing around with them. Definitely don't change the name of any files that can prevent the scripts from working entirely, but you'll understand this is where they're being housed. And that's it for your overview on Suite Scripts. I'll see you in the next video.